Praise God. Praise God everywhere across this virtual platform, wherever you are. Tonight is a very, very special night. Tonight, we are opening up our 2023 National Youth Camp. Our 2023 National Youth Camp. You know, in 2021, we began with this mantra and the slogan that we did run with, that we want every young person in the nation to be relentless. It was the year of being relentless. How many of you remember that? Being relentless. Praise God. And I believe from that time till now, you have remained relentless. Relentless in prayer. Relentless in the word of God. Relentless in your pursuit of godly values. Praise God. Now in 2022, we emphasize the need for rootedness. From relentlessness, we encourage everybody to become rooted in Christ. That every young man, young woman in this ministry will be so addicted to the word of God that you will become firmly rooted. Rooted, never to be uprooted and never to lose out. And then this year, under the leadership of our dear chairman and the executives, we are being called to be repositioned for maximum impact. And therefore, this year's National Youth Camp, the theme is repositioned. We're keeping it very brief for you, young man, young woman, being repositioned. Youth, let me get your response in the chat room. Youth, aha, uh -huh, I know you are responding. Let's get it again. And youth, rooted in Christ for maximum impact. Hallelujah. Rooted in Christ for maximum impact. Tonight I'm speaking to us as we open up this very special session on the theme, making maximum impact in your youthful years. Making maximum impact in your youthful years. Beloved young man, young woman gathered here tonight from across the nation, what if I told you that there is a place in God where you can be so positioned such that you can never fall? That there is a place in God, that there is a place you will get to in following God, that you will so get hold and hooked up to the Lord, and you'll be following certain practices that scriptures has laid before us. And because of your commitment to follow the Lord, God says, you will never fall. Tonight, that is my emphasis. Being repositioned to find yourself and to do the things that will make you so strong in the Lord that you will never fall. It is exciting to know that there is such a place in the Lord where you can follow him so well and where he can guard your life and help you so that you can be confident of a bright future. In fact, tonight I'm sharing from my heart to all of us and I want to trust God that every young person in this nation will be equipped even more, will be strengthened even more, that you will be able to realign your values to so walk with God. You will make your own resolution tonight and Daniel will be our character study. But like Daniel, we shall position ourselves and we shall build convictions that will enable us to take a stand in the storms of life and in a hostile culture such that we will never fall. Can I hear somebody shout, I will never fall. Praise God, I will never fall. From California to Chicago, we will never fall. Across the various regions, we will never fall. The future is bright for you and God has a plan for our lives and for his church. We will never fall because the grace of God is sufficient for us. If you do these things that I'm going to talk to you about tonight, in the book of 2 Peter, in fact, Peter wrote that epistle and he said, if you do these things, you will neither be fruitful, fruitless or ineffective. And he says, you will never fall. We shall be reading very shortly. As I share my last message with you at the national level in my service to you as your youth director, I want to seize this moment to appreciate our dear national head, Apostle Michael Ajimanamwaku, for his great support for this ministry over the season. I'd like to express my love and gratitude to all of our executives, past and present, and all the youth and pensa leaders 
across this nation, from the local level all the way to the national level, God has blessed us with a very huge organization that is operating under the auspices of our dear pastors and our dear regional heads across the, the walls and across the boundaries of this nation. We are very thankful. I'm very thankful. I am humbled that I was blessed with a whole array of amazing young men and young women who worked themselves out to make this ministry a very, very successful and a very impactful one. I want us to just shout it out to all the local leaders, all the district leaders, all the regional youth pastors, the executives. I want you to push something, some fire sign, some thumbs up in the chat room and let's celebrate all of them for the amazing work you've all done over the years. Some of you have stuck with this ministry. You did not relent. You were rooted. When we held Pensa conferences, you were there. When we held national youth camps, you were there. When we held uh, all of these various programs, our podcasts, our Nipson team, our social media team, all of you in the PPN uh, a wing of the ministry, it's been such an amazing, amazing, amazing team. We thank the living God who has prospered the work in our hands because of your labor. Hallelujah. God is good. The bright, the future is bright. For all of us, hallelujah. I'd like you to stand strong. Tonight, I'm just going to pour out and speak over your lives and give you a few nuggets that will enable you never to lose out or give up, but to press forward and hold on to your faith to shine in this generation that the Almighty God will find you a vessel of honor and will use you to bring revival in that local church, will use you to impact that campus, will use you to change that community. I believe that God is raising fiery young men and women filled with fire who will stand out in this generation and who will fulfill purpose. And I'm here to challenge you tonight. I pray that something will be birthed up in you. Something, something will be stirred up in your spirit. And you will make a resolution never to be wasted. You are too needed to be wasted, young man. You are too needed to be frustrated. And God has a plan for your life. Hallelujah. Making maximum impact. Not in your old aging years, but in your youthful years. And yes, you can do it. Let's read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 11. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version. It says, Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. It says in verse 8, For if you, if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor fruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Peter lists a whole set of qualities, virtues. And these character traits. And he's telling us in this passage. That if these virtues abound in you. He's saying that he will, they will make you to be neither useless nor unfruitful. In the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is to say that if you grow your faith along the line of these virtues. After faith, he says moral excellence. Virtue is a reference to moral excellence. If you add these virtues to your life, moral excellence, and to your moral excellence, adding knowledge, and to your knowledge, self-control, and self-control, perseverance, not giving up, pressing in, holding on, never quitting, never losing up, never saying it's done, it's over with me, but holding on. He says adding godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, loving one another. Being Christ-like in your speech, character, and conduct. Beloved, if these virtues abound in you, 
This is the secret. It says, if you do this, you will never fall. I want to leave that message with you. But I'm going to come back and then talk about these virtues in a bit. First of all, I want to be able to draw attention to the life of Daniel. And then we'll come back and finish with 2 Peter. But before then, I'd like to remind all of us that one of the engines of our 10-point vision as a ministry that I consider very, very important or probably the most important in this season is the call for you to be grounded. For the call for us to be discipled. The call for us to develop staying power in the kingdom of God, in the family of God. Developing the virtues and the qualities that will give you staying power. Somebody say staying power. You know, our generation has too many young men and young women who don't have staying power. They fall off because of the culture, because of the pressure, because of the enticements, because of the deceit, because of friends, because of what they will eat, because of what they see with their eyes. They don't have staying power. God has given them a destination. God has given them a great future. God has given them all the resources that they need to be able to have a great future in the Lord. But the staying power to hold on. When the storms come, the staying power. Tonight, I pray that every young man and young woman would develop resilience, staying power. Like Daniel, that you will look at the storms and look at the culture. You will look at the deceptions. And because you have developed knowledge, you are able to discern culturally what is right and what is not right in the context of the word of God. And you develop staying power to do what is right. Praise the living God. I want to speak something into your soul. Even as we look through the pages of scripture. Ability to remain. You know, I'd like to challenge you. That be positioned in Christ by the help of God. So that you can align yourself with the Lord. And so that you can never fall. We want to challenge each other tonight. That everybody will develop the spirit of Daniel. May the spirit of excellence that ruled in Daniel's life come upon every one of you tonight in the name of Jesus. The spirit that enables you to say no to the king's food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when we look at the Bible, it is a book that is filled with young men and young women who distinguished themselves by fulfilling God's purposes for their lives. Young men and young women in scriptures who distinguish themselves. You see, if you remove people like Moses, Abraham, there won't be a good record when it comes to the book of Genesis. God always will pick men in specific generations in order to keep that generation relevant. It is the presence of men and women who vowed to align themselves with God. Their presence brought relevance to their generation. It was Daniel in Babylon whose presence along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their presence gave value to all that God was doing in the whole generation. Men and women who distinguished themselves and they said, we want to make maximum impact. Are you going to be that man, that woman, that young man, that young woman in this generation who will make a vow not to be ordinary, who will make a vow not to drift with the crowd, but who will make a vow that I vow to be used by God. I vow to seek God with my whole life. I vow to make this generation relevant by my presence and by my walk with God. I want to challenge you. See, the presence of certain people would always bring credibility to a generation. What are you bringing to this generation? What are we doing to make God happy and, and, and satisfied with this, his kingdom agenda for this generation? Praise the living God. When you read the book of Malachi and you fast forward and go to the book of Matthew, you will see that those 400 years, all through those 400 years, the Bible says there was silence because God hadn't found a man. Until the Bible says in the book, in the book of Matthew, a man showed up called John. 
And when people came around, they said, are you, are you the one? He said, I am John. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. So God was waiting for John all along until John showed up. I pray that you will show up where there is corruption and where people are giving up in their faith and where your fellow colleagues and your, all your young ones around you are giving up and just following the crowd and wasting their lives, you will show up among them as an addict of God, somebody who has decided to choose a different path. May you show up. May this season bring about the manifestation of sons of God in every single region in this nation. That in California, there will be the manifestation of the sons of God. May it be you. Hallelujah. That in New England, there will be young men and young women who will say, this is our season. We are manifesting as sons and daughters of God. That over there in Chicago and all the way in Washington and Maryland and in New Jersey, young men and young women will arise and you will say it is my season to manifest as a child of God. When Daniel manifested in the land of Babylon with the spirit of excellence ruling in his life, everybody knew that this was a different man on a mission, fulfilling purpose. Beloved, don't let life pass you by. Rise up and hold on to your destiny in God and say, I am manifesting because the whole earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. People who will carry the presence of God and who will make a difference, who will be a salt and who will be a light. May it be you. I said, may it be you. In Carolina, may it be you. In Atlanta, may it be you. When God says, I am looking for a man, I am looking for a man who will stand in the gap, that you will show up and you will say, I am that man. I want to be that man. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. And as you rise up to make maximum impact, let me tell you this. There is no limits to what God can use you to do when it comes to evangelism, when it comes to prayer, building the church, building campus ministries, planting local churches, winning the, the guys in your classroom, in that high school, doing something that is meaningful, something that will speak in eternity. I pray that you will be among those candidates who will stand out and dare to be different, whom God will use in their youthful years. You will make a decision that, hey, I am not going to wait until I'm 40 five and I'm 50 to serve God. There are many people who in their teenagers God was using to do extraordinary things. I'm not going to waste the very fine years of my life. I choose to give the finest years of my life, the golden years of my life. I choose to give them unto Jesus, to put those years in the hands of Jesus. How wonderful will it be when all the teenagers in this nation have decided to lay their lives into the hands of Jesus. And Jesus baptizes them with fire and makes them fire brands and releases them across the nation. Oh, we will possess this nation by fire because we've released ourselves and we placed our lives into the hands of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, young men and young women listening to me tonight, I want you to know in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 39, the Bible says that those, these young, these little ones, Deuteronomy 1.39, it says, And the little ones that you said will be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad, it says they will enter the land, and I will give it to them, and they will take possession of it. I will give it to them. Beloved, the nations belong to the young. It belongs to you. You understand the culture. You understand the language. You can navigate your way across. I've said this many times. You are the outreach wing of the church. I pray that you will not lose that privilege that God has given to you to stand out and make an impact with the knowledge he's given to you and the privileges he's given to you in this nation. Don't waste your life and don't waste the privileges that you have in God today. You know, Jonathan Edwards was a central figure in the early Great Awakenings. He graduated from Yale 
in 1720 at the age of 17. And then he pastored his first church when he was 18. Jonathan Edwards, who preached the message, sinners in the hands of an angry God that brought heavy revival across the land, right from Massachusetts, all right? These were people who walked this earth like you and like me. At the age of 17 and 18, they were already stirring the waters. They were already shaking the whole communities and shaking the nation. Beloved, it's not too early to be able to stand on your feet and pray for two hours. And that is the spirit that we have, we've talked about all these years. That God will give this church a group of young praying generation. Hallelujah. The church of Pentecost was built on the foundation of prayer. Because prayer brings the presence and the power of God that we need to be able to accomplish our responsibilities in this world. I pray that that spirit of prayer that is sweeping across the younger generation, that spirit will catch up with you. And you no longer go to church and stand and you are chewing gums and your hands and your pocket and you're just looking somewhere when others are praying. May the spirit of prayer fall upon all of us. Hallelujah. That we will stand out as young men and young women. Hallelujah. George Whitefield, at the age of 25, he created a sensation in England by preaching outdoors and then later on bringing revival to America. In one year, this young man, George Whitefield, traveled 5,000 miles through America, preaching more than 350 times as he traversed the nation from north to south. An estimated 25,000 people gathered in Boston Common just to hear him speak. In 15 months, as much as a quarter of the country have heard his message. If God used them, God can use us. Do you agree with me? If God used them, God can use us. You know, there is a book that says that this is the last Christian generation. The book's title is The Last Christian Generation. And when I looked at it and I reflected on the great glory God is about to release in this end time, I tell myself that no, this end time and this generation is not the last Christian generation. God is raising the Gen Zs and oncoming generations. And I believe that fire that is being passed on, that fire that our fathers have passed on through the centuries to us and all of us are working ourselves out to pass it on, that ancient fire will never die. It will never die. And all of you young men and young women listening, may you catch that fire in your own generation. May you be a fire carrier, a fiery preacher, a fiery Sunday school teacher. Hallelujah. God is raising neurosurgeons and raising accountants and raising business shakes in this church who will carry fire to the workplace, who will change their workplace for Jesus Christ. As we are speaking it, as we are calling it, as we are prophesying it, so shall it be. Hallelujah.